What's up guys, welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. And today we've got another viewer's car and a very, very cool one. My name is Martin and today I'm taking a look at this Opel Speedster. Now this isn't just any Speedster, this is Timo Speedster and it's freaking cool. It's green, it's got black racing wheels <laughs> and the supercharger. So it's got about 250 horsepower and this is going to be a lot of fun. So the Opel Speedster, it's a bit of a weird car. This is a 2003 model and it's been made by Opel to like improve on their image because they were really this down to earth German brand that only had very dull, boring cars. And in the 90s, they made a lot of cool cars together with Lotus. For example, the Omega Lotus with uh, nearly 400 horsepower in a family sedan. That thing was absolutely awesome. And they decided to collaborate again with Lotus. And based on the Elise, they came up with this Opel Speedster. Now, this is not a rebadged Elise. It's far from it. Opel claims only 10% of all parts used are from the Elise. So this really is an Opel. It's got an Opel drivetrain, Opel headlight units, Opel wheels, Opel transmission. Uh, even the body panels are made by Opel. So the setup is really the same as the Elise. The frame is, the chassis is. Um, other than that, it's really, really different. Even the wheelbase is larger than with an LE, so Opel really made it their own. So as stock you get 175 section front tires, uh, which are a bit narrow. And the problem was that because of the lack of grip on the front axle, the rear would like overtake the front end, which made it a bit of a dangerous car. So a lot of people switched to 205s uh, like Timo did. So you got more of a wide tire in the front, generating more grip on the front axle, uh, making it less twitchy and more secure on the road. Another benefit is that 205s are a lot easier to find for a performance tire like these Toyo Proxxas R's, T1R's actually. Uh, really, really nice tire, really love it. Just hammering down the road in this little green beast. So as you can see, the mirror caps, for example, are from a Lotus, really recognizable. And the engine is right here, mid-engined, 2.2 liter. Um, let's talk about that some more when we open the hood. And the back is this typical Opel Speedster design. These stacked exhausts, really, really weird looking exhausts, but I quite like them. This like 80s retro cool Speedster badge. Like it's a rollerblade brand instead of a sports car. <laughs> I actually, actually quite like these weird little touches to this car. Big diffuser. This is an aftermarket unit. Looks really, really cool. I just like this car. I don't know why, but I like the way it looks. It's a bit weird looking. Maybe that's why I like it. I like weird looking things. Okay, so let's open the engine. There should be something right here to open up the engine bay. Oh, there it is. So, here we have the 2.2 liter Ecotec engine from Opel. So this was an engine they used in nearly every car they made. It was a boring engine that wasn't really fun or good or whatever. But put it in a lightweight car and it turns into a very, very fun unit. And I like the fact they did something completely different because Lotus have always used Toyota engines and supercharger 
kits for more performance, but Opel really made it their own. I really, really like that. It wasn't like Toyota and BMW nowadays, just using the same components. So yeah, kudos to Opel. Now this car is extremely lightweight. This 2.2 liter is in total 870 kilos. That's, that's ridiculously light. Now you could also get a two liter turbo engine from Opel with 200 horsepower, but it made the car 60 kilograms heavier and it wasn't a very sporty engine. It was a very torquey engine that had a lot of mid range, but you know, it wasn't a nice engine to like drive on the limit with. Now, Lotus did have a nice configuration with uh, the supercharged Toyota engines because the supercharger is more rev happy. It likes to be managed by the RPM. It like, it's easier to manage with the throttle. It's way easier to get a nice feel with. That's why the previous owner decided to put a supercharger on this engine. Uh, the supercharger is from a Chevy sedan SS something. Not even sure which model it actually is, but the end result is not 147 horsepower, which is stock with this engine, but 250, so plus 100 horsepower from this supercharger, which sounds absolutely insane. Now, as you can see, body panels, it's all plastic. Chassis, all aluminium. And that's why it's so freaking light. Let's get in. Which isn't the most... Ooh, I'm getting better at it. Good job by me. Let's close this up. So go follow the owner at Team Oversteak. I'm not getting out again and getting in again. So I'm going to show you like this. Okay, let's get going. You have to turn the key. And this car being from 2003, they did the coolest thing you could do back in the day. Add a starter button. Oh yes, that's cool. Now in here, it's very Lotus Elise, very recognizable. Let me put this right here. But it's a bit bigger apparently it's a bit more spacious so which is a good thing now we have this gated shifter how cool is that you only see this with audi r8s ferraris lamborghinis but this is a cheap opal with a gated shifter i have to say it's a bit flimsy as you can see it moves around and it's not nice to like shift quickly because of the very very large gates from second to third you just hit the gate instead of third gear but i i think it's just awesome it's it's just awesome i think it's great first to second though third to fourth you can really shift quickly so i think it really adds to the like character of the car making it way different than an elise so I like it. Now, as you can see, normally the red line is at like 6,000 RPM, but because of the, but this supercharged one will do 7,000 RPM. this 147 horsepower version goes from 0 to 100 in 5.9 seconds I mean that's seriously impressive for that little power but this one I did some draggy tests with it I did three runs I don't want to stress it too much but the fastest one was 5.1 seconds and I can really improve on that no problem because 4.9 won't be a problem with this insane car so it's really really quick let me show you and really controllable because it does like slide the backhand a bit but it's very very manageable very very nice <laughs> That's 
that awesome, that sound of that supercharger getting on and off boost is just absolutely insane. Let's close up this window. Hope you can hear me a bit better then because it's absolutely insane, insanely loud in the cabin if you really start pushing it. But it's so much fun guys, it's a lot of fun. It is a problem for taller people that the steering wheel isn't adjustable, so I keep hitting with my knee against the steering wheel and the gear lever, and if I go right, my hand is in there as well, so I have like a sandwich of myself and the car, and it's not really nice. It's not really nice to like push the car when that happens. But that supercharger, I mean, what is it with a supercharger? It's just an awesome piece of engineering. I know a turbocharger is more efficient, you get more power, but for a naturally aspirated engine, the character of a supercharger is a lot better because a supercharger can drop and raise RPM very quickly. Turbocharger has a bit more trouble doing that. So I think this is the right setup. Okay, let's get going on the Autobahn, which is really, really eventful in a car that weighs 900 kilos. Oh 
Apple Speedster. Who knew? Who knew? It's so fun. So much fun. I actually like it better than the Elise. Maybe it's because of the supercharger. I mean, that's going to make a hell of a difference. Adding 100 horsepower to a car. Nearly doubling power is always... Well, it's not always a good idea, but in this case, it actually is. Man, this thing is a lot of fun. Oh my God. It's serious. It's seriously, seriously fast. It's hilarious to drive. We really have to add one to our garage because this is just awesome. But I guess fitting that supercharger, that's not going to be cheap. No. I've now driven this car for one hour and I'm getting more and more in sync with it. It's absolutely insane. It's becoming like a part of me. We get really like... Oh, Jesus Christ. Timo, thank you so much for letting me test drive your Opel Speedster. It's been a blast. It's just simply awesome. Now I have to convince Max to get one. This is so much fun, guys. Go drive an Opel Speedster if you're looking for a fun, cool sports car. Thanks for watching, guys. Go check out this review of, a, of another very fast Opel. Go check out this POV Reviews playlist or subscribe by clicking the big button right here. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.